Uh, I'm Tom Goldstein. I'm the publisher of SCOTUS Blog. I'm a Washington lawyer. I have a law firm called Goldstein & Russell. Uh, I teach Supreme Court litigation at Stanford and Harvard Law Schools. Our focus is almost exclusively on Supreme Court litigation. We represent the parties in about one out of every ten Supreme Court cases uh, through either the law firm or the clinics that we have at the law schools. And so we do uh, arguments on the merits, and we do lots of cert petitions, briefs in opposition, amicus briefs. Uh, we're just very focused on that one place. Uh, the clinics at Stanford and Harvard are an outgrowth of the law firm's pro bono practice. So when I first started in Supreme Court litigation, I was mostly doing cases for free, pro bono cases to try and build up experience. And so uh, I had a whole collection of that work. And my thinking was, you know, who is it that uh, would be really interested in contributing their time and effort to pro bono work? And I just thought, well, law students would be perfect for this. I had actually gotten my best experience as a law student as an unpaid intern for Nina Totenberg, and that's how I got in interested in Supreme Court work, and I thought that law students would have a, a similar reaction. I also thought that uh, as someone who had gone to American University's law school rather than one of the nation's elite law schools, and it was a fantastic school for me, I really thought that uh, this was work that law students could do if they were really committed to it and had the time to do it and had the right supervision. It's not something that only someone who clerked for the Supreme Court and worked in the Solicitor General's office could do. They are at elite universities. Uh, there are great opportunities for us to work with really talented law students and they've Having the affiliation with the law schools has been tremendous for the law practice too. So we definitely try and get as you know the the a really talented group of people involved in the cases. But I think we could do the clinics at other law schools as well. And there are clinics at Texas and at UVA and at Northwestern in addition to Yale. And so a lot of a lot of schools have recognized the value of these sorts of programs. Sure. The, the law students uh, at Stanford and Harvard really are completely committed to the effort. The great thing about those programs is when they're running, the law students work on the cases essentially full-time. They are not part of a broader curriculum in that semester or that quarter at Stanford. Uh, they have almost no other classes to no classes at all. So at Stanford, if you're not an advanced student, I, you're not doing it for the second time, you're really not going to have any other coursework other than your work on the clinic. And at Harvard, we do it in the winter term, which is a three-week program, and the students actually move to Washington, D.C. to work with us in our offices uh, on the cases. So uh, I think that's really important to have that complete uh, and utter devotion to the cases so that you can really kind of uh, absorb yourself in them. Uh, the commitment from the law schools is tremendous to allow the students to spend that much time on the work. Uh, and it's also not cheap because the students for Harvard, they move to Washington. For Stanford, they go uh, frequently to visit the clients. They come to Washington to see oral arguments and meet people. So it's an expensive program for the schools. I think that to do this job well, you've got to have some good writing skills, you've got to have really solid analytical skills, and you've just got to be able to separate yourself from a lot of the facts and emotions in the cases. You really have to believe and advocate for your client, for sure, but it's very different from being a trial lawyer. The Supreme Court in particular, the Courts of Appeals, generally are going to be concerned about getting the law right rather than producing just justice in an individual case. Uh, litigating at the Supreme Court at a high level also involves a lot of understanding that group of nine people and what it is they're trying to do at different stages when they're agreeing to hear cases, when they're deciding cases on the merits. 
understanding the value of the briefing versus the oral argument and the different role that those play. Um, as I've been doing this now for 15 years, uh, almost entirely, that that's uh, been my overwhelming focus, it gets actually more and more complicated, not simpler and simpler as you realize all the different layers to the onion that you're peeling back. Uh, almost. I had, as having been Nina Totenberg's intern at NPR, kind of fallen in love with the Supreme Court. I clerked for a year for uh, uh, here in D.C. and then went to a big law firm, Jones Day, which was tremendous for me and had an appellate practice and a Supreme Court practice and I got introduced to the actual legal practice there. And then I went to a uh, firm called Boyce Schiller for a couple of years, which was just starting out, and they let me do some of this work. But by the time I got to my fourth year in practice, I just went out on my own and decided I'm going to yeah, gonna try and accomplish this myself. Um, and so ever since 1998, 1999, uh, I've been doing this almost exclusively.